Hello, Hans Kenton. Now, do I just talk? <clears throat> I'll start now. Now, I'm talking on the phone, and um, uh, talking on the phone is usually improvised, very rarely scripted. I've tried not to be scripted today. I have just collected my thoughts, but only in a rudimentary way. And I, I don't think there are any rules against doing that at the moment. Um, I'm talking about improvisation as a form of display, usually. Um, it's different from group imp improvisation or conversation. Um, and one example, um, well-known example of solo improvisation is, the, is on the um, Radio 4 program, Just a Minute, where people are asked to talk for a minute without repetition, deviation, or hesitation. Now, I very much hope that I'm allowed to hesitate, uh, because I do hesitate a lot, and I think in any improvisation, it's very important. Even in a solo uh, talk like this, there should be um, uh, an alternation between sound and silence to some extent, giving listeners space to reflect on what has been said or even to begin to understand what has been said in my case. Um, and it's useful to have a theme on just a minute. Uh, the speakers uh, are given a theme. And I suppose my theme today is improvisation. Um, and one can think of improvisation in many ways. I mean, there is improvisation as one finds it, for example, in organ music, uh, where the player is um, extemporizing. So I'm trying to avoid repetition. There's no need for me to do that. I have to remember that. But the, the player is extemporizing on, on a given theme, perhaps a well-known theme, and certainly using a musical language that the listeners will recognize, um, probably a tonal language. Um, but on the other hand, there is free improvisation, and that is the improvisation that I uh, found myself doing when I was younger. It's one of the, um, and it, it's what my teacher Cornelius Cardew was doing. It's what his friends were doing. Cardew really found his home in the improvisation group AMM. And his attitude to music making in general changed completely after that. Um, it was about the time that he was working on his graphic score treatise. And that's a score without any instructions. So in a sense, one has to, uh, one has nothing at all um, as a basis for that piece. And it, 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 it's, it's quite an alarming prospect when one first approaches a performance of that. Um, there's a danger, of course, with free improvisation um, that, that it can just be complete nonsense. I suppose in, if I were talking on the phone, then I could, I could just speak gibberish. That would be uh, perfectly acceptable in this context, I think. Uh, I could do what Kurt Schwitters um, did in his Ur Sonata. I could, I could um, um, resort to pure sound. And I love that. I used to love listening to concrete poetry in the, um, in the 60s. This was poetry made up entirely of... Um, vocal sounds, sounds made with the voice, um, but usually without any sense, uh, without any meaning uh, attached to the words or, or the sounds. Um, and if it's not gibberish, um, the solo voice, as it were, if, 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 if the results of my talking on the phone are not gibberish, I would hope that they would range across many subjects. Um, and um, one person who is famous for doing this, apparently, is Noam Chomsky, the, the linguist. He can, uh, he can sustain a, a monologue for a long time. Uh, and he will, he will move, of course, from linguistics. He'll move to politics and he'll talk about his children. And um, I imagine it's completely absorbing. And I've been encouraged by that because I've, I've, I've always felt guilty that I tend to do the same. I tend to wander, wander around, wander from one subject to another. There's usually a connection. There's always a connection. 
Um, but the problem for the listener is that sometimes I will abandon a subject um, rather brutally and leave the, uh, leave the listener stranded, as it were, lost, frustrated, uh, as I proceed down my own um, path. Um, but I think the, the covering a, a range of subjects is, is the great glory of the, the conversation. I think on, a, on, a, on the phone it tends to be two. I think conversa- um, what they call um, um, conference calls can be very frustrating because people tend to talk over each other. But a conversation between two people can be inspiring because of the range of subjects that it covers. Um, there is a big danger, of course, and that is that um, it can become routine when people know each other too much. They're too keen to uh, um, make each other feel comfortable, to endorse each other's view. Um, familiar ideas are exchanged, uh, cliches tossed back and forth, and it's, um, it's fun for them. But um, in the end, no more than... Um, a dance between like-minded people, really. Um, I think there is a danger of becoming too comfortable in conversation because it, um, we have what latterly has become known as the echo chamber, where ideas are just reinforced. Um, so that's one type of improvisation, and we find that in jazz sometimes where people are, are patrolling the same territory, just going round and round and round, using the same pedestrian formulae, as it were, um, and enjoying it and, and, and really um, being completely satisfied by the exercise. But um, they don't know what they're missing. That's all I would say. Because ideally, in a conversation... Um, conversation between two people again, um, the two people should be um, pushing each other, pushing each other into good thinking. Um, and this can be uncomfortable. This can be very difficult. There can be long silences um, as one struggles to find the word. There, people can be talking at cross purposes a lot of the time, as I was the other night when I was talking to Chris Newman. After about 20 minutes, Chris pointed out that we were really talking about different things. It wasn't a waste of time because I wasn't completely convinced by what he'd said. And so I was able to return to the subject and justify our, um, uh, our lines of, the, of inquiry, as it were. But I was reminded after that recent phone conversation with Chris how similar it was to the sort of conversations that Cage and Feldman had in the 60s. And these can be found... Uh, on the internet, I think. And again, there, there's improvisation there, but neither composer was um, fond of improvisation. Cage was uh, famously opposed to improvisation, and Feldman as well, really, disliked it. And yet they were they were flying free in that, very slowly, um, struggling desperately to uh, understand each other's points of view because each was each was each was um, coming up with strikingly new ideas all the time and uh, strikingly provocative ideas um, but within the spaces and um, in good time I would say they broke through to something glorious and I think the the possibility of breaking through to new ideas um, as a result of being in conversation, as a result of improvising in that way, is fantastic. Something that um, I'd like to keep returning to, and I might suggest to Chris Newman that he gets in touch with the local radio station and records our conversations um, at their expense, although he says he's got a very good deal. So when he rings me for two hours, as he did the other night, it's all absorbed within a 75 euros a month fee, which I think is very good. It's certainly cheaper than any deal that I've got. Anyway, so that's the phone conversation. I think that's a good place 
to start because and to finish. So, so I'm, I'm more or less come to I've come to the end. Brian. Yes. Is that all right? Well, I'd ask you. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions if you have. Okay, a but I, I I fulfilled the brief. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will um, organise some compensation for you, Howard. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's that's fine. Um, why, why, why I asked you this? Uh, asked you about improvisation, which was curious to me. Um, it's because you're so associated with Cordelia's Cardio and the Scratch Orchestra. And Indeed I am, yes. And I talked about, I hope it was all right for me to talk about conversation, but it, it sort of seemed right. But I did touch on music as well, didn't I? Yes, of course. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I mean, that's, but that, what's interesting is you're associated with um, the Scratch Orchestra and Cordelia's Cardio, but improvisation plays a less prominent role in your music, if that's okay to say. A less obvious role. Yes, and I could have talked about that. It was a little bit, it was rather capricious of me to go off and talk about talking and and so on, because in a way it's 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 right at the heart of what I do, really, because when I'm, somebody asked me this morning, a student sent me an email saying, could I talk about the structure of a piece he'd heard recently on a CD, the concerto of Hurdy Gurdy and Percussion, and I, I, I pointed out that there was no structure, that I, I moved from one section to the next. Um, as I did when I used to make films as a teenager. I knew I couldn't waste any films, so I was very thoughtful about what followed what. And that's the way I, I compose on the whole. I, and certainly those bigger pieces, certainly those concertos, the concerto for Hurdy Gurdy and Percussion and the Oboe and Accordion Concerto. But even Lento, to some extent, I moved from one section to the next, and then I structured it to some extent. But I found the structure. I didn't invent the structure. But the process of composing for me is very intuitive and involves a certain amount of improvising. I mean, if I sit at the piano, as Stravinsky did, and find, find a few sounds or find a few chords or make notes or something, there's, there's, it's, it's, um, that's, that's really improvising. I do begin with, um, with nothing, if I can. Uh, I think it's much more interesting to to have um, no fixed ideas to begin with. I mean, I think as soon as you're offered a commission, there are certain things in place. As soon as somebody suggests writing a piece, certain limits um, present themselves. Yeah. And um, so the imagination works with those. But on the whole, when I when I think about the material, which is right at the heart of what I do, I'm improvising. 